the uh, faculty members of this university uh, for okay. wonderful uh, wonderfully hosting and delivering asking me to deliver this topic this is our uh, institute icr directorate of medicine and aromatic plants research which we have started uh, uh, way back in 1992 and uh, our uh, institute mandate has has to work on various aspects of medicinal and aromatic plants in the country such as good agricultural practices development varietal development genetic resource enhancement enhancement and also coordinating research uh, across all india coordinated research program and uh, we have we are currently working on more than 15 crops as a mandate crops of our institute like isabu sanna safed musli giloi gugal ashwagandha aloe aloe vera then lemon grass pamarosa similarly we are working on kalmik sitawa madhumashin and uh, salpani on various aspects of uh, uh, the technology development we are responsible for uh, creation of revolution in the cultivation of uh, isabgul uh, we started uh, introduce introduction of this crop from arab countries since 1920 and uh, without intervention so we are growing uh, this crop in four, four lakh hectares in the country in parts of Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh and Gujarat and this has become a sustainable livelihood option for more than three lakh farmers in the country. You can see that this crop is most export earner among the medicinal plants in the country and you can see that more than 1600 uh, uh, crores is the annual turnover that we get uh, from the export of these medicinal, this only single commodity from our country. We are also responsible for creating revolution in the cultivation of ashwagandha in the country. And uh, you can see that more than 10,000 hectares uh, is the ashwagandha cultivation in our country, which was traditionally cultivated only in Gujarat and Madhya Pradesh and Rajasthan because of the congenial environment. Now the cultivation has shifted from these traditional growing areas to uh, to non-traditional areas like Andhra Pradesh, you can see that more than 4,000 hectares in Andhra Pradesh and Tamil Nadu alone are benefiting more than 80, 88,000 farmers in the country. And you can see uh, our technologies are reaching to these, uh, uh, these farmers and they are growing. Similarly, we have created a revolution in the cultivation of Senna in the country. We can see we have, this is also one of the introduced crop like psyllium. And this is now a monopoly. India has a monopoly, and more than fifty thousand, uh, uh, more than five lakh, point five lakh hectare area, fifty thousand hectare area. You can see it is being cultivated in Rajasthan, Tamil Nadu, and Gujarat, and it has become a sustainable livelihood option for many farmers, millions of farmers in the country. And uh, today's topic that I have chosen is uh, understanding the molecular biology of uh, interaction between the host. Uh, that is Isabgul and the atmosphere of Umaicid is a pathogen which is causing a down, deadly down middle disease in the in this crop. And you know all that Isabgul is an important medicinal crop and uh, this husk is the economic part and uh, it is a monopoly crop of our country and it is we are the only producers in the country uh, uh, across the world and it is India's, India's pride and you can see that more than 0.40 lakh uh, million tons of husk is being produced and being exported to different parts of the world and uh, you can see that more than 4 lakh this is of course old data that i am showing it more than 4 lakh hectares this is the husk you can see this is the the seed husk so after hulling the seed you get this husk and we go for uh, using it in uh, as a as a medicament for uh, enhancing the uh, medicament for constipation as to enhance the fiber in the product food products so we are using this one and um, apart from this it has a lot of applications uh, this good cm husk has a lot of application you can see this has uh, medicinal property like laxative like medicinal property and it is being used for calcio planting industry dyeing of cloths and also being used and to prepare agar agar for cultivation of uh, microbes that is also being used I can see it is also mixed with uh, multigrain atta where you are enriching the 
multi-grain ATA with the fiber, and you can see a lot of multiple grain with the selenium, and you can see uh, we are preparing many jams and jelly with the sabgul ask, and it, in medicine it is also being used as a tablet binder, so that uh, that helps you to deliver the drug in the to the to the particular uh, particular location for its action, as well as we are making lot of ice creams. Uh, with the with the products of sugar and product of isab gul. Apart from this traditional consumption as well as preparation of uh, uh, industrial users as well as medicinal users, we are also using uh, we are also using other products such as seed. Uh, the isab gul seed is also being used for as a cattle feed, cattle feed to make it uh, make a make a cattle feed. So this is one of the um, one of the by product that we get out of after selling that we are also using this one and it's also being used for uh, making poultry feed. Similarly, the some good straw that we get out of cultivation is also being used as a fodder for cattle. Why some good is important to us? So this is the property that makes us this some good is very economically uh, uh, economically applicable. It has a swelling property. As soon as it, as soon as it comes in contact with the water, it undergoes swelling. You can see that if you take one gram of subgul husk, if you put the water, it will swell uh, to 50 uh, cc. This is the amount of uh, swelling. Swellingness is required, and the swellingness has many properties. So this is the property, and this swellingness is because of uh, hemicellulose content, xylons. Arabinus, Rahinus, Galactoviromic acid, lignin, and uh, cellulose. And uh, it is a natural fiber. It is a natural fiber in our diet. Whenever we are using low calorie diet, low fiber diet, we supplement the diet with the psyllium husk so that the, the fiber will be enriched with the, this one. This is the trend in export. Of course, this is uh, old data that I am presenting it. And uh, you can see that more than now it has surpassed around 2,000 2, 2, crores is the annual turnover that we get it from this single commodity. And this one you can see that trend has increased uh, year by year and the demand has increased for this. Part. And this is the crop that requires a cool dry weather for cultivation. It cannot be cultivated in Tamil Nadu because of harsh uh, rainfall and other conditions. It requires cool dry climate like that one available only in Rajasthan, Gujarat and western part of our country and up to uh, some parts of Uttar Pradesh also it is being cultivated. It has a chromosome number of uh, uh, four chromosomes are available are there in this chromosome. 2N, 2N is very uh, eight chromosome. This is again very unique plant which has very low number of uh, uh, chromosomes which is which is again very useful for us to study any genetic uh, uh, genetic things and you can see that this is there are one set of uh, metacentric chromosomes and you have one sub metacentric and uh, uh, again telocentric uh, sub metacentric chromosomes available in this species uh, and you can see this is the cultivation area of uh, isabgul in, in Rajasthan it is being cultivated in Jaisalmer, Barmer, Jalor, Siroi, Pali, Jodhpur, Nagur and Chitorgarh districts uh, maximum cultivation is happening in Rajasthan which is followed by Madhya Pradesh. You can see that only two districts it is being cultivated. And in Rajasthan, in Gujarat, it is being cultivated in uh, all three of these Kutch, uh, Junagar, Jiro, Surendranagar. Only isolated places you can see that cultivation has been earlier, previously used to cultivate a lot of cultivation happened in Gujarat. Now the cultivation of Isabgul has been shifted to Rajasthan because of the intervention that we get. Uh, irrigation potent, irrigation area, irrigated area of Gujarat has been increased so that more innumerative crop spices are grown uh, in these places and this crop has been replaced by innumerative spices. One of the major problems with the Isabul is that although there are many varieties available, so we can see that still the varietal potential, potential we are not able to reach and the yield uh, gap is always there. And uh, low, this is this may be due to gene low genetic variability that we see that uh, very few germplasm lines we have conserved and uh, gene ba genetic base gene pool is very low and the dominant disease is a major problem. So very rampant whenever it comes it will have a lot of effect and the insect pest like thrips is one of the major problem and drought is another phenomena that is affecting the cultivation of isabgul in our country. 
we focused to address uh, this uh, problem uh, with our own uh, resources we started uh, mutation breeding to counter uh, this uh, downy mildew issue and you can see that uh, there is uh, symptoms like this very localized four year symptoms under the field conditions you can see that downy growth available in this uh, leaf you can see that upper side also you can see many infestation happening you can see that uh, this is healthy leaf this is healthy leaf and you can see that uh, once the infection is there it becomes systemic it, it spreads entire uh, leaf entire plant and the entire plant will die uh, and it will not flower also sometimes you can see that uh, this is healthy uh, spike and uh, floral infection you can see that uh, the inflorescence getting affected like this like that again economic part is the inflorescence where the seed set will happen so if that is not setting then we will not get a very good yield in this uh, this one and you can see that this is the healthy uh, healthy uh, healthy panicles and you can see that when are they when there are a systemic infection of uh, floral systemic floral infection of downy mildew this the extended spike will be there and only chaffy seeds will be there seeds will not form or uh, if formed also if it is immature all those things happens and also you can see that uh, uh, stigma receptivity of infected florets you can see that stigma is not affected drastically due to infection and this is happening like that this is how filament length get reduced and anther does not burst and the pollens become sterile so sterility is a another issue then we need induced plant sterility also happens this is how it is happening in this one so we thought that control why we need to control when we have chemical solutions for the mildew so we thought that controlling this is through chemical space may not be commercially economical in the farms and we thought that uh, uh, there is a need to uh, develop uh, down the resistant cultivars uh, again uh, we don't have information on the genes and pathways relating to downy mildew resistance in, in this crop so we started uh, working on this and uh, through different uh, funding agencies uh, through dst funding and two projects we have completed working on various aspects of uh, disease development and identification of uh, pathways leading to production of resistance as well as uh, the governance factors you know any any disease for that matter there is a triangle of disease will be there there are three components of uh, uh, this one here the host plant will be there Uh, you should have a host plant which is susceptible in order to occur disease, and also you should have a pathogen which is uh, having more virulent nature, and also you should have a consumable environment. This is what we have been taught in the pathology courses all through that uh, these components play a very important role in in under in con controlling uh, in uh, in the colonization and the disease of the particular any disease for that matter, and. Uh, we know that many people have worked and uh, ultimately the floor in during 1946 had demonstrated that there is a gene every gene in the pathogen uh, every gene in the pathogen has a gene corresponding genes to counter that uh, pathogen pathogen gene in the host plant so he proposed gene for gene hypothesis and this has become a basis for understanding the molecular biology of various uh, uh, pathogen various pathogens in this one we can see that pathogen have uh, plant pathogen pathogen have two versions of a particular gene say for example some are avr genes virulent genes and you have dominant avr genes and you have uh, recessive avr-avr-lens genes and you can see that uh, resistant gene also has two allelic forms one is a dominant resistance dominant resistant gene and we have recessive resistance only the combinations of dominant resistance with the combination of uh, Uh, again, uh, the avr lens gene uh, will have uh, combination will will give you resistance. Otherwise, many times you can see that there is a counter uh, that uh, defensive mechanisms. Plants also will counter the defense as well as pathogen also invades the plant. This is what happening that uh, there are uh, there are many effector effector arsenals uh, will be produced by pathogen to counter the resistance of the particular plant. so we started exploration of host genes for uh, for uh, for uh, this panospora uh, dominant to disease in this uh, this one we, this is this is one first aspect i will be covering what we did is we developed a mutation breeding program and we got many mutants 
uh, as many as 4,400 meetings we have developed and we have stabilized these meetings and we screened out these meetings for resistance to down the menu based on the based on the visual score that we do it. So visual score of one to five we have followed and we found that there are two genotypes which are again this genotype DPO 185 which is again DPO means directorate of directorate plantar ovo ovata. Uh, over time, so 185, which is showing extremely resistant. We, we say that we are not getting uh, infection in this plant, and ultimately this this plant has yellow this yellow leaf uh, tip uh, nature marker, molecular marker, the, uh, the morphological marker also is available. Similarly, we got one plant which is DPO protein, which is extremely susceptible. You know that uh, very 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 as soon as it start flowering, you get infection. Whereas this plant, you hardly see any infection which is coming out. So we screened out this uh, material and uh, based on this one, we see that uh, you can see that uh, it has been stored in a one to nine scale, and uh, you can see that this this is DPO 14, which is again very susceptible, and we have identified DPO 185, which is resistant. But resistant genotype has some un undesirable features, like it is late flowering. We don't get uh, flowering very soon and also it is very poor yield whereas the earliness genotype is uh, very early flowering this, this this genotype is normal flowering and it, it starts flowering immediately and it is very susceptible to diseases so we have identified the source of for resistance genes and we started working on these two genotypes to explore our pathways in this production host plant Again, plant unity to dominate the disease. Again, there are different pathways. You can see that plant unity is happening through. Uh, there are different uh, concepts have been proposed, and you can see that plant triggered immunity. There are pattern associated molecular platforms are available on the cell wall of the uh, plant, uh, which will recognize the pathogen and counter the same. So it is called plant triggered immunity, PTI. This is this is even today it is an animal system also this is existing so plant immunity even an animal immunity so these kind of things are happening so uh, the plant triggered immunity which is called as pti and also you see that another kind of immunity is effect or triggered immunity so what will happen is that the plant triggered immunity uh, this pathogen will be there on the surface of the plant it will not interact with the any of the portion in the cytoplasm only on the cell wall itself uh, through that cell wall uh, there will be a PR regions that pattern recognition uh, uh, systems are available and so there it will interact with that one and the so that uh, the humanity will be uh, will be established humanity will be established whenever there is a breaking of interaction so again the colonization of disease will happen Similarly, you have effector to trigger immunity. Here, the pathogen will inject the effectors. There are certain certain molecules, certain genes, certain compounds will be injected into the system, and uh, into the system, and it will interact with the cellular signaling process, leading to human response. So, there are two kinds of immunity. One is PTI, that is pan trigger immunity, and the effector trigger. Immunity. So we started working identifying the genes involved in PAM triggered immunity as well as uh, effector triggered immunity. So what we did is we we went for uh, uh, whole genome transcriptome of the infected uh, leaf of uh, subgroup, both resistant and susceptible. This one, and we sequenced and we got the sequence and we annotated and we started characterizing the genes available. We have a data set of more than about about around 30,000 genes in that data set and we started categorizing them and we found that there are many uh, genes involved in pan triggered immunity this is how the biocentric pathway is there whenever the pathogen is, pathogen is there so pathogen will interact with this kind of pamps uh, uh, like cf9 c c gcs back one rlks then this uh, fls2 like that these are all pamps interacting with the pathogen they will perceive the signal from the pathogen on the surface and they will in turn, uh, in turn connect, uh, transmit their signal to the uh, map uh, kinesis 1 and then um, leading to activation of defense related genes. Likewise, 
we have categorized the genes in our transcriptome uh, like this is these are this is in case of, this green indicates that the gene is uh, gene is upregulated in the uh, on the uh, resistant parent uh, 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 whereas whereas this is again uh, again down regulated uh, uh, red indicates the down regulation and whereas uh, this this color indicates the uh, indicates there is no change so likewise there are different uh, pan trigger dominant genes have been identified in our transcriptome pathway and these pathways and and they have been characterized for their role in pan trigger dominating similarly there are number of vector uh, trigger triggered uh, gene type uh, genes have been identified uh, in this transcriptome pathway and their differential expected pa pattern in the in the both uh, uh, resistant parent as well as susceptible parent and are under normal condition as well as infected conditions have been studied we are also see that we also see that there is again there is also activation of lot of uh, uh, human uh, uh, hormones during infection so like activation of uh, axin activation of jasminic acid asmin activation of salicylic acid cytokines and ethylene these are all the secondary uh, in fact whenever this immunity is broken down then the pathway will get activated so they produce this kind of compounds to counter the uh, resistance so we th we thought that there, there may be involvement of many of uh, genes involved in this kind of these three pathways like arginine jasminic acid salicylic acid cytokines and so and ethylene and we uh, studied the genes and we have identified different um, uh, genes which are regulated upregulated in resistant and susceptible parents and uh, were identified and they have been characterized uh, characterized to understand the, the molecular biology of uh, this pernospora infection in the and resistance similarly uh, 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 we cell wall has a lot of uh, compounds such as lignin cellulose we can also the resistant genotypes might be producing this kind of lignins so that that those lignins will not allow pathogen to induce receptors into the system so that may also be suspected and we started working on identifying the genes involved in the lignin pathway and uh, we found that many genes have been identified which are being upregulated and downregulated these are all the host genes which have been identified Uh, in the uh, isabgul uh, plant system which may have a, a role in uh, conferring resistance to infection by thermospora plant genes so these are, and later on we started working on uh, the uh, the r genes which which are resistant genes which are uh, which are most important for conferring the and uh, the resistance like like as you all know any plant for that matter the resistant genes are there uh, which which will offer you and we can clone them and we can identify and we can induce into ld cultivars these are all the origin classes there are different classes of origins more than eight classes of origins and we found that many uh, resistant genes present in our transcriptome base as many as 60 genes we can see that uh, they have been identified and uh, out of which we have all them we have studied the differential expression pattern in both the resistant as well as susceptible gene and we found that there is one gene which is showing significant differential expression uh, among the among the resistant and susceptible parent and that gene we started cloning them and uh, you know these are all the genes which have been identified and these are all the similar class of genes which we have identified and uh, we have characterized uh, we have one one gene which we have targeted and we have uh, we have classified and this gene is known as pore gene we call which we call it as a pore gene we name it as pore gene because the pore means plantago vivota resistant gene so this gene is again very similar to the uh, similar to the potato uh, uh, potato let a blade like gene like the phytophthora infestan r gene which is a cs uh, cnl class of genes cc mbs lr class of r gene we isolated this gene and uh, from our transcriptome uh, uh, database this is how the gene structure we have we have deciphered the five and nuclear region we found that exon of our n421 base pairs and we found that there is an intron uh, exon so you know that there are genes are there there are you know, eukaryotes you have this this exon introns are will be there in prokaryotes we have only the only uh, exons will be there introns will not be there because they have different role in differential expression of the genes and uh, this is how hexan and uh, we found interesting part in that we found that there is an intron uh, intron in the 
people in the regions which is again very unique thing that we have identified and many few genes few odd genes has this kind of feature so we found that our core gene has an intron which is about 116 base pairs in the 3 prime mtr region so this is the coding sequence that we get around uh, it codes for 2673 base pairs according to dna sequence and uh, and that has a pro protein codes for a protein which is about 8890 amino acids and uh, we have calculated that this gene has cc domain which is again coil coil uh, uh, type of this one this is typical r gene which is again and uh, the ERC domain, domain, this is domain is there also, and which is up, up to, from 150 to 440 base pairs on this one. And we do have the lot of regions, losing rich repeat region, also it is there, which is again when six losing, uh, uh, losing rich repeats are also being found in this gene. So then we studied that uh, the diversity of our core gene with the other uh, R genes which have been can, uh, which have been which has been cloned in, in the plants, and we found that this POR gene, that is POR gene, subgroup POR gene, is as closely related with the R1 gene of uh, late light uh, resistant gene of potato, and uh, this has been confirmed with our uh, sequence analysis and other thing. Further, we started the association of this gene with the resistant. We we have taken that. Uh, both uh, 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 the we studied the expression of this poor gene in both DPO14 that is susceptible variant as well as resistant genotype, and with the compared to the uh, control control where you don't have any infection, but we have created a gradient of infection like slight inf uh, slight infection, medium infection that is moderate infection, or uh, we can call it as very severe infection because again uh, see a slight infection means when there is a colonization at that time we have taken the sample and extracted the RNA and we have got around one day after that one so when the disease will establish on that one so we have taken the sample and uh, we when the fully established symptom symptom is there, that time we have around five days after infection, we we, ext we extracted the RNA. We studied the expression of this this MD poor gene in, in these samples. When compared to control, we found that there is again steady increase in the infection uh, in the resistant parent compared to susceptible parent. So this gene is uh, this R gene is there. So we confirm that this R gene is there in both resistant and uh, susceptible. But the expression is more more uh, vigorous, more more in case of resistant parent compared to susceptible parent. So then, uh, likewise, many R genes we have now, so which may have potential applications for breeding for resistance and also to characterize. Uh, uh, characterize various pathways leading to the establishment of disease in the uh, ISM group. Likewise, the second aspect we have undertook is that exploration of virulent genes in the pathogen. So we collected the Pernospora plantagenis pathogen, homocyte, and we started ex we extracted the genomic DNA and started sequencing it. And uh, we found that uh, you can see that this is the uh, level of infection that you can see that even very thick mass of uh, infection is happening in this one uh, and um, on the lower surface this is these are all the new spores that you can see mature new spores and other things sexual spores we have studied uh, this is the electron microscopic study uh, observation of uh, how this colonization because this will happen only the, the pathogen will colonize uh, the host only through stomata stomatal colonization we have seen uh, which is uh, there in typical dominido human seeds and uh, we went for uh, sequencing using uh, 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 illumina sequence we have used and we have generated the data and of the pathogen and uh, we found uh, we annotated and we got uh, many uh, genes identified the whole genome of pernospora uh, plant genesis we have deciphered and uh, we found that uh, uh, this Pernospora gene has a, a similarity with the Pernospora effusia, which is onion dominant uh, species, on, 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 on causing onion dominant. Likewise, it has similarity with Pernospora tabacity, uh, uh, Phytophthora parasitica, Phytophthora solum, these are all other only seeds. So, we have confirmed that our uh, genome is uh, correct and uh, it has uh, very good uh, uh, relevance to study uh, further. And uh, we have identified uh, many candidate pathogenicity related genes in the Pernospora plantagenic genome. And these are all uh, different categories of uh, 
pathogens with genes which are we have identified and of which these RXLR effectors are very unique uh, effectors, very specific to Dunhill disease that we have identified uh, in our plant, Pernospora plantagenes in comparison with this is in comparison with Pythoptera infestans, which is also unicity affecting the potatum. Likewise, uh, further, uh, after this getting these things and the further uh, studying the expression of different uh, RXLR effector candidates in different uh, uh, systems. What we uh, assist, what we assist, we we thought that how the pathogen uh, is in using, what is the expression level of this uh, in the pathogen in the host system. So we extracted the uh, RNA from uh, the these different tissues. I zero is uh, where we, we do get uh, infection, very few infection. I one is the moderate infection level, and I three is the severe infection level, and uh, when uh, we have used this gap DH gene as an internal control, control regime to study this one. And this is the RXLR effector gene, which we got synthesized. The primers got synthesized and amplified in the uh, host system. This is a pathogen, pathogen gene, pathogen gene, pathogen DNA extracted and which have been sequenced and studied the expression in the host system. So we found that this, uh, this RXLR, uh, RXLR 154, which is again, very, uh, we can see that this is a positive uh, uh, expression of regulation, and the, there are down regulation of this. This when the infection infection happens, at the time of infection, you, you see that this effector has very uh, very uh, up regulation. Whereas uh, when the uh, when the colonization establishes, this this uh, this uh, gene has very uh, down regulation. Similarly, you can see that Pernospora uh, plantagenes are XLR. 163B, we can see that at two, two stages it has a upper regulation, whereas when the fully est established colonization, you can see that there is no, there is a down regulation. Like that, we have identified, uh, we have extended the expression of more than six RXLR genes in the, in the system to understand how this is going to work and how the pathogen will interact and where actually it starts, interacts. So, this is again, we have uh, studied a few another uh, set of genes and we have seen another expression you can see this this uh, effect of gene which is again you can see that it is upregulated in all three stages it is again ubiquitous it is expressing at all the times so there are there are some kind of effectors which will express only during the colonization which will not ex uh, which will not be expressing after uh, after recall after colonization so that kind of phenomena we have identified we have hypothesized that, that there are a number of uh, uh, RXLR genes which are going to play a very important role in establishing the colonization of the pathogen on the host system. Then, uh, uh, so likewise, many uh, genes we have categorized and these genes, understanding of these genes will play a very vital role uh, in understanding the, the molecular biology of uh, this host and the pathogen interaction in, with respect to the mildew disease of Isabgul. And then what, what we understood that using this uh, RXLR gene primers, we started characterizing the pathogen. We collected the pathogen from different locations, like this is from these three samples, these four samples from the Mansur. These are the dominant infected, uh, from infected omicid. We got the dominant sample and we got uh, extracted the DNA of the omicid, then we started characterizing them. And these are all the samples from uh, Vivaipur and this is from Gujarat and we can, these are all the things that we got it and we characterize that the, the, there is genetic variability in the pathogen. Pathogens across the locations vary. So they differ. So there may be different races of Dhanumildu which may be affecting uh, the Dhanumildu crop in different uh, regions. So accordingly there may be different origins which we need to explore a region specific deployment of origins we need to undertake so this has been as hypothesis with, with this study so i think uh, and this is how uh, that uh, all uh, uh, pathogens uh, derived from different locations from which is only seeds are different we have classified three three different uh, uh, groups we have grouped them into different groups group one group two and group three so the work is in progress to characterize the role of these uh, these uh, these uh, omicid pathogen which may have uh, different uh, 
uh, races which we need to understand the uh, the corresponding resistance genes because the deployment of not one gene is not enough to um, against all the races of the mutant so see there is a need for further characterization so at this stage we are at this stage and now we are now undertaking few of activities to uh, uh, identify the uh, or gene uh, location of on the chromosome and start integration of that or gene into different uh, varieties that we have developed we developed it to three varieties three varieties luckily these three varieties are moderately resistant to the mendelian we get moderate infection in these three varieties so that is that is not uh, we are not uh, targeted breeding we have made we have just exposed them to the mutants and we got mutants there may be different uh, or genes which are which are involved uh, in these three genotypes which is again moderately resistant to this one i express my sincere uh, acknowledgement uh, to the uh, two project that we have undertaken with the funding from dst which has led to two phd students in this work so which has been funded uh, by this one so one for uh, characterizing this this project we have undertaken to characterize the host genes and this we have undertaken to study the uh, pathogen genes okay this is my team and of course dr p manivel sir was there uh, he was helping me in all the aspects of uh, the breeding aspects and line development and mutants and all he has, he has developed and uh, i used to take care of all these molecular biology aspects and of course these two phd students we have come out and this is person from uh, engineer from uh, isro so he will be assisting us to get a, uh, get uh, the locations uh, how this this is is happening and which location is happening more rampantly the mapping what we used to do it with this uh, my acknowledgments to my parent institution for all the support that uh, uh, has given to undertake this activity and uh, with that i conclude that there is there are multiple or genes are required it is not that single or gene is enough to counter the different uh, uh, different uh, pathogen pathotypes and uh, we are anticipating that there are many pathotypes which we need to understand and uh, work accordingly to deploy the uh, or genes in different locations for this pathogen thank you very much for patiently listening thank you very much and uh, if you have any questions then we can take it further thank you if there are any questions yes yes madam sir uh, you have a wonderful presentation and you have done a wonderful work only few team of scientists are working on this interaction of our genes and the susceptible genes that is present in uh, host plan mm. and also interaction between the pathogen and the host that is uh, man triggered immunity yeah my one question i have to ask uh, regarding this spore gene mm. uh, have you checked the metabolite uh, details that is metabolite profiling at the time of uh, this our uh, gene expression that is spore uh, gene you have shown in on QP PCR result. Yes, madam. It's expression of uh, only expression only we have studied, madam. Metabolite quantification we are not done. Oh, okay. We have taken the uh, the expression different uh, level of expression we have defined. So, for example, at the uh, at the zero day of expression, uh, in fact, yes, at the colonization to establishment of disease, and we have categorized and we collected that one. We have. only seeing the expression of this gene yes, so, so that's one, that is only next you can apply for a project to see yeah. that uh, see post uh, plant uh, interaction we have to apply. so during that time uh, what is the metaplate that is involved in that pathway which is uh, triggering that expression of the origin in a high level that uh, that can be studied yes yes ma'am yes, yes. So, thank you ma'am yes we will do take it and regarding this uh, susceptibility of this uh, post mm. Uh, have you checked in hotspot locations, sir? This western no, whether it is no, no such no studies. Nobody has worked it. Oh, we no, have no studies. Uh, Excellent. Yeah, our, our, our institute we have only worked only pathological aspects. How colonization happens? What are all the symptoms that is going to come? So on uh, management aspects we have been worked, but uh, resistant aspects and how this human city is interacting with the plant. So what is the molecular biology? That aspect only. Left out, and we started working because we don't have pathology or pathologist collaborators in this one. Okay, okay so. so we studied only the the genetics aspects of both pathogen as well as the host pathogen host, and uh, few genes we have started looking at, and which will be mapped and which will be again introduced into different uh, different genotypes or different varieties. 
the next program will be on marker assisted breeding for <laughs> gene deployment aspect we will do it the preliminary information is that our genes deployment has to be location specific deployment we keep based on the regions we have identified which region which type of pathogen is there so and deploy accordingly because single r gene for all the locations may not work no, no, but that's yes, what we we are hypothesizing maybe that we will take up in the due course up okay sir. yes ma'am thank you sir thank you students it's open for discussion you can ask some questions anybody all all the phd master student no phd phd is no so anybody is working on uh, this uh, diseases resistance breeding for resistance breeding for resistance anybody is working first year la so the first year only sir no first year msc all the first year msc means to be post work no problem breeding for resistant you might have undergone post na there they will teach you this effect of trigger immunity pam trigger immunity so <laughs> this, this is the commonality immunity is a common system both in animals and plants you see that antibiotics are there in the plant antibiotics also there in the uh, human system yes like that this is again one thing that you can also work in medicine with this concept you can also shift to the medicine hmm? you can apply likewise one of my senior now now he is working on medical aspects from disease he is working how disease will happen He is a plant pathologist, but working on uh, the animal viruses, animal diseases. Oh, yes. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your excellent presentation. Now I invite uh, Dr. Venu Devi, ma'am, Professor, Plant Pathology, working in Department of Medicine and Aromatic Crops, to propose formal vote of thanks. Good evening to all present here. First of all, I must thank our uh, Dean S. P. D. S. who introduced this platform for giving these lectures. so you people are getting exposed to new area of research from various institutes who are coming as an uh, external examiner for the public defense so today's presentation is a wonderful thing i thank our uh, um, principal scientist dr nagraj reddy sir uh, this crop is very new to us down south we are not known to this is about the crop am i correct or not students whether we are cultivating this here so it's a very new thing and we are uh, we learned a lot from his lecture and he did a wonderful work on resistant genes so you can also have an idea of uh, working with these uh, type of focusing on uh, resistance in uh, towards the disease not only diseases and also for pests you can work so thank you very much sir uh, coming from gujarat and uh, delivering a wonderful uh, work and also sharing your knowledge in this field and on behalf of our uh, uh, professor in the department of medicine and aromatic crops and uh, dean hc and r requirement i thank all of you for present uh, presenting this uh, wonderful uh, lecture sir thank you very much